So this is my part two on energy flow in ecosystems. And in this video, we're going to talk about food chains, food webs, trophic levels, and the pyramid of energy. So once energy is stored by autotrophs or primary producers, uh, it is available for consumers, which we remember from our previous video, consumers are organisms that need to eat to obtain their energy. So here we have a deer, right, or a couple deer, and these deer are going to, they're herbivores, so they're going to eat grass. And the flow of energy is going to pass from the autotroph, or the primary producer, to the deer that are consumers. And then if the deer get eaten by a predator, then the energy is going to pass from the deer to the consumer, or to the predator, right? And so when we look at energy, energy flows in a one direction pathway from producers through various consumers. Now, if we look at... Um, an example of this, of it flowing through, uh, we can see what's called a food chain. Now, these food chains, we start always with autotrophs. And so these plants here are the autotrophs or the primary producers. They're eaten by a grasshopper, which is going to be the um, prime or the herbivore, sorry, the consumer. And then you can see it goes up with more um, uh, carnivores. I think uh, I think the little western tanager might be a, an omnivore. I think it eats insects and seeds, but that's okay. Um, but realistically, in ecosystems, uh, life is more complicated than just single food chains, right? There's actually more than one organism that that snake or that hawk are going to eat. There's a variety of different food choices. And so we represent the more realistic flow of energy in what we call a food web. So where's the best place? We'll put my face here. So when we talk about a food web, it's going to be a network of interconnected food chains showing different feeding interactions through which matter and energy flow. So when we look at this food web, the arrows are actually, if we go back to our food chain, I want to point out that these arrows are showing the direction that the energy flows. So when it flows, the arrow points from the grasshopper to the western tanager bird, that means that the energy that's in the body tissues of that grasshopper is being provided to the bird as an energy source. It's being passed to the bird that ate it. And so these arrows are showing the direction energy flows. And really a food web is just composed of a series of food chains. Now when you notice these food chains, they always start with an autotroph um, and then pass to an herbivore and then to various um, predators or consumers. And so food webs are just a bunch of food chains all intertwined together. Now, uh, when we go back to these food chains, though, we can add names or labels to the organisms. So we've already mentioned about autotrophs um, being called primary producers in my previous video. So here, um, our first trophic level is the primary producers. Now, a trophic level is each step in a food chain or a food web. Now, um, our primary producers are autotrophs. Oops, I'm sorry. Are autotrophs. Here's, there it is. Um, and then when we talk about the rest of the organisms, they're heterotrophs, right? But each of these heterotrophs um, is part of a different trophic level. So we start with primary producers, and then those are eaten by primary consumers. The word primary means like first. So these primary consumers are the first to eat, and so therefore they're going to be herbivores. Then we have our secondary consumers, which are generally going to be smaller carnivores or omnivores. And then we have our tertiary consumers, which will be larger animals. Now here I have a fifth trophic level, which is our quaternary consumers, but not all ecosystems or food webs have a fifth trophic level. A lot of them are gonna stop at that tertiary a consumer or fourth a trophic level. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our food web. The, oh, all of these are heterotrophs, right? They're consumers, they're heterotrophs. They rely on other organisms for energy. So if we go back to our food web, though, we can take this food web and we can actually organize it into different trophic levels. So as we take these organisms, we can begin to group them based on their feeding relationships. 
So our bottom trophic level is going to be our primary producers. Then we have our primary consumers, our secondary, and our tertiary. Uh, so like I mentioned, not all food webs have a fifth trophic level. It really comes down to how much energy is available in that ecosystem, like how much photosynthesis was going on. So if we look at two examples here, we have our primary producers. On land, it's going to be plants. Um, and on, in the ocean, could be something like phytoplankton or seaweed. Seaweed is actually a like a um, an algae. And then we have our primary consumers, which are going to be our herbivores. And then we have secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, and maybe a fifth trophic level called quaternary consumers, depending on if there's enough available energy. So here, I want you to check yourself. You can pause the screen if you need to to think. But uh, a secondary consumer here. A secondary consumer here would be the western bluebird, the oriole, or the squirrel because they eat the insects um, below them. And then an omnivore in this could either be the squirrel or, or the oriole because they eat both plants and animals. An organism in the third trophic level would be the western bluebird, the oriole, or the squirrel. And then a primary consumer would be like the insects because they're there, the first ones to eat, they are the herbivores. Okay, so a uh, second example here of a food web. This is in the hydrothermal vents. In this one, the primary producer is gonna be the bacteria. The bacteria, a secondary consumer would be um, the crabs that eat the worms or the giant clams. An organism in the third trophic level is gonna be those crabs. And then a primary consumer would be the giant uh, clams or the tube worms. Now, when we talk about energy availability in these food webs or in these ecosystems, we can represent it visually using uh, energy or ecological pyramid. And I think I'm going to stop here so I can record a third video that focuses just on energy flow.